This recording is a collection of unintended indiscretions before microphone and camera, covering a span from the early days of radio to modern day television. It is dedicated to members of the radio and television industry who have been the victims of these classic boners. This priceless recording offers consolation in the fact that they are not alone. In bringing you this series of classic boners in radio and television, we turn back the clock to the early pioneer days of radio, for our starting point, to what is considered the granddaddy of all fluffs. Harry Von Zell, veteran announcer, was introducing the chief executive to millions of radio listeners who awaited this important address. Let's listen. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States, Hubert Heber. We take you now to BBC in England. And as his trusty little donkey carried Quixote up the road, he could see the gates of the city ahead. Don Quixote's excitement rose as he contemplated the nightly adventures that waited him. I see our time is running out. And there we leave Don Quixote sitting on his ass until tomorrow at the same time. We now bring you Mr. Keen, loser of traced persons. And now to conclude our program of Christmas carols, our guest star will sing Come All Ye Faithful by Odeste Fidelis. One lesson an announcer learns is to make sure he is off the air before he makes any private comments. But even the greatest sometimes slip. A legend is Uncle Don's remark after he had closed his famous children's program. Let's turn back the clock. Good night, little friends, good night. I'll tune in again tomorrow at the same time when I'll be back with all my little friends. We're off. I guess that'll hold a little back tonight. Boners are not always committed by performers. Sound effects men, too, have their share of wool. Let's listen to this dramatic show, which was popular in the early days of radio. Okay, you rat. I got you covered, and now I'm going to drill you. Take that! Okay, now I'm really going to drill you. Take that! On second thought, I'm going to take this knife and slit your throat. On a program which originated from the Great Lakes Naval Station, Eddie Peabody, the great banjoist, was introduced thusly. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Eddie Playbody will now pee for you. Let's listen to this newscaster's exciting report of an important wedding. All the world was thrilled with the marriage of the Duck and Duchess of Windsor. On an interview show, a famous beauty told of her charitable activities. Let's hear what she has to say. You girls are famous for some of your charitable activities, aren't you? Yes, why, we Zigbell girls are known for holding some of the biggest balls in the country. There is no doubt that Stephen Foster was one of the greatest, if not the greatest, writer of American folk music. His spirituals ranked high among the music the world likes best. And now Stephen Foster's immortal song, Old Jack Blow. Performers on an all-night telethon can get very tired. Let's listen to Maury Amsterdam doing his bit for a worthy cause. We'll be able to give you a report on how much money we took in in just a few moments. Oh, here's a note that was just handed to me. Mr. and Mrs. John Gilgood of the Bronx.
Here's what comes of making poor, hard-working announcers get up early in the morning. It happened in the days when the National Broadcasting Company was comprised of the Red Network and the Blue Network, now the American Broadcasting Company. Their facilities were combined in Radio City, New York. One morning, a blurry-eyed announcer dashed into the studio just as he was to deliver his station break. Pressing the monitor button, he declared to the world, This is either the Red Network or the Blue Network of the National Broadcasting Company. In England, there's a famous pump room located in the city of Bath. Let's turn our shortwave dials overseas. This is the British Broadcasting Corporation. The next program comes to you from the bathroom at pump. An extra was carried away by the honesty of Abe Lincoln on a television play, one which Raymond Massey starred as Abe Lincoln. As Lincoln's well-wishers were bidding him a fond farewell, the extra's voice was heard above the goodbyes of the milling throng. Goodbye! 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 Goodbye. 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 Goodbye, Mr. Massey. Let's listen to this gem which occurred on a well-known quiz program. And what do you do for a living, my good lady? I'm a maid. I do housework and take care of a large family. Uh, how large a family? Well, let's see. There are four boys, three girls, one adult, and one adultress. Uh -huh. An announcer picked up a script one day and read it exactly as it was handed to him. It was a bull of a commercial, the standard time signal, with some additions to be made at appropriate times. Here is what the listeners heard. It's 8 p.m. Boulevard Watch Time. On Christmas, say Merry Christmas. On New Year, say Happy New Year. Thank you, Mamie. That was fine, fine. And now Cecil Gill, a yodeling country boy, will sing There's an Empty Bunk in the Cat House Tonight. <coughs> or, uh, I mean, uh, there's an empty cot in the bunk house tonight. <laughs> So, friends, don't forget to visit your A and Pool feed store. When Walter Pigeon appeared for a local bond drive, he was greeted by the president of the drive, who was thrilled at the thought of meeting a movie star. The result of his excitement was the following. Mr. Privilege, this is indeed a pigeon. A spoonerism is described in Webster's Dictionary as an unintentional interchange of sounds usually identical sounds in two or more words. Webster needs no better example than the following announcer's commercial for Rupert's Beer. What do you want to relax after a hard day's work? Try Rupert's Rear. Performers are not always responsible for the boners that you hear in radio and television. Continuity writers are very often the culprits as evidenced by this classic bit of writing. Steinberg's department store has just received a shipment of large size bathing suits. Ladies, now you can buy a bathing suit for a ridiculous figure. A local Midwest station told its citizens about the prize winners of their annual farm contest. And here they are, final results of the FFA contest are Apple picking won by Dick Jones, Tractor Driving Award to Jack Davis, and one of our own girls, Miss Betty Smith, was chosen as the best whore. You are listening to the mucus of Clyde Lucas. Let's tune in on Mr. John J. Anthony's Court of Human Relations. Uh, what is your problem, ma'am? Well, speak right up into the microphone. My problem is this, Mr. Anthony. My husband isn't talking to me or having anything to do with me since his business fell off. New Year's Eve found this announcer in a jovial mood. This is WJZ New York. No other station can make that statement. Good morning, ladies. I'm awfully glad you're with us this morning because we have a very special recipe that we want you to be sure and prepare over the weekend. 
It's uh, something that I'm sure will surprise your husband, and it's called uh, frickin' chickasee. Oh, I beg your pardon. Uh, that's chicken fricassee. We're here at Washington's National Airport awaiting the arrival of our very distinguished guests, the King and Queen of England. When they arrive, you will hear a 21-son galoot. This is Indiana's first broad-chasing station. A program director of a Texas station finished preparing the day's schedule. Later, he made a change. Instead of Les Brown's orchestra, he substituted a religious program which was to originate from New York. He scratched out Les Brown's name and wrote over it, Yom Kippur. When the new announcer came on shift, he picked up the schedule and exhorted his listeners to... Stay tuned for the dance music of Yom Kippur's orchestra. Let's switch our dials to a daytime program presided over by your friendly homemaker. Now we present our homely friend maker. And Dad will love Wonder Bread's delicious flavor, too. Remember, it's Wonder Bread for the breast in bed. Our next selection was written by George Gershwin, with lyrics by his lovely wife, Ira. One of radio's dependable and veteran announcers came out with this classic. And so ends another version of a famous love story. Sometimes an announcer has to rush to beat the second hand around the clock. This announcer hurriedly finished a religious program to be in time for a station break. And be sure to listen next week when the topic of the sermon will be Cast Thy Broad Upon the Waters. This is the National Broadcasting Company. We take you to Monmouth Racetrack in Monmouth, New Jersey. Well, now, just before we get down to the feature race, it looks very much today in the opinion of the experts that it's going to be a very, very close contest between Dolly Jane and that beautiful new bay, Harass. Now, oh, just a minute, just a minute, fans. I've noticed here that Harass is not going to run. Remember now, Harass is not going to run. Be sure to scratch Harass. Go to your neighborhood theater to see Rita... Yeah. Go to your neighborhood theater to see Rita Hayworth, whose salami will take your breath away. At Heitman's, you'll find a variety of fine foods expertly served by experienced waitresses in appetizing form. Don't forget next week's sermon is entitled, Do You Know What Hell Is? Come in and hear our organist. Late movie shows on television are famous for the direct mail commercials. Let's listen to this young lady who has this message for her viewers. Try this lovely four-piece dinnerware starter set in your home for seven days. If you are not satisfied, all you do is return it to us. So you see you have everything to lose and nothing to gain. Ladies, at Zimmer's, you'll find sneakers that are also excellent for street walking. Everyone in your family will love Manischewitz wine. Sweet, but not too sweet. Tangy, just right. Get <coughs> Manischewitz wine. W-A-B-D, New York. Ladies, does your husband wake up in the morning feeling lustless, uh, listless? The master of ceremonies on an audience participation program asked a woman contestant about the health of her husband. My husband's nerves are always upset. He's always taking phenobarbital. Here's a wartime OPA message urging housewives to conserve valuable fats. Ladies, take your fat cans down to the corner butcher. It's reported that the collision of the freighters was due to the fog, which was as thick as sea poop. I'd like to dedicate my next number to my good friend Henry and his expectant bride. Let's turn the dial to one of your favorite soap operas. I'm not secure when I go out with most boys, but when I go out with John, 
He gives me a good feeling. Mel Allen, a sportscaster, interviewed a great All-American football player on his program following the Pabst Blue Ribbon fights on CBS. Mel made a habit of offering his sponsor cigars to his guests. However, one evening, a football great threw Mel a curve when he pushed the box of cigars aside and said, I never touch those things. They make me sick. Newsmen also have their sense of humor as evidenced by the complete breakup of this newscaster. In the wonder world of science, the Hayden Planetarium has heard from a Minnesota man who claims that the shape of Aurora Borealis and Northern Lights can be changed by flapping a bedsheet at them from the ground. The planetarium doubts it, but the man says he did successfully flap sheets in his backyard one midnight, though his wife kept hollering at him to cut out the foolishness and get back in the house. And now, now here are today's closing Dow Jones stock averages. Industrials off 14 cents, rails up 3 cents, utilities up 7 cents. And that's today's Headline Edition. Tune in tomorrow at this same time for Headline Edition. You'll hear important reports of the names who made the news in vivid audience. <laughs> this Sunday evening, be sure and hear Drew Pearson on ABC. Pearson has received many awards for his work, and one of his treasures is the Saturday Review of Literature site. <laughs> this is ABC, the American Broadcast. Let's tune in an audience participation show and hear part of this classic interview. I have children aged two, three, five, and six. What happened to four, madam? Oh, uh, that's the year we got our television set. We take you now to BBC in England, where a children's show is in progress. We're going to play a hiding and finding game with the music. Now, this is what we do. We pretend that you've got some balls and I'm going to hide them. They might be hidden high up near the ceiling. Or they might be hidden low down on the floor. You don't know where I'm going to hide your balls, but the music will tell you. Now, first of all, shut your eyes while I hide them. Yes, shut your eyes. Now, open your eyes and dance lightly about looking everywhere for your balls. <laughs> going to tell you where your balls are. They may be high up so that you have to stretch and jump up for them, or they may be low down so that you have to pick them up off the floor. Listen. Well, were your balls high up or low down? They were high up, and I hope you've all jumped up and got now, dance round and toss them in the air and play with them. The following prescribed is transcribed. Even the most veteran newscasters, whose job is to read countless news items, sometimes get completely lost. Let's listen to the news for this example. Dispatches from Prague this morning report that the communist premier of Czechoslovakia, Clement Gottwald, told a meeting called last night to form a communist action committee that a quick communist victory was certain now, and he's quoted as saying it may be in several hours, but it will certainly be in several days. Well, there can be no doubt since the communists already control the Czech police and are beginning to go through that, uh, their, this, uh, go, and are beginning to go through this control uh, to, I'm sorry. Remember that bulk is important to the digestive tract to aid in regular movement. Mother should have a good stock of Kellogg's Pep so that you can have a bowl every morning. Yes, kids, be sure mother is stopped up with Kellogg's Pep. 
Don't forget to give your girl a gorgeous groan for Christmas. On an audience participation show, Herb Schreiner, the popular Indiana Hoosier, asked a woman if she were a natural-born citizen of the United States. Oh, no, I was born cesarean. At Ma's Esso Station, you can get gas charged up and your parts lubricated in 30 minutes. Evening Melodies is heard one hour earlier if your community is on Eastern Standard Time, one hour later if, well, there is a two-hour difference in certain cities that, oh, to hell with it. A word in a script at first reading can be completely misleading, as this announcer's rundown of news will prove. General Marshall arrived at the conference, tall, dignified, and uninformed. Out of the mouths of babes, oft time come gems. Let's tune in on the Airwave's brightest children's program. And what's your name, little fella? Kenneth. How old are you, Kenneth? Five. Five. And did you ever do anything wrong? I fought it. I see. <laughs> and I'll stay tuned for I Love Loosely. Here's a news item about the Russians that once again crapped up in the news. Galen Drake, CBS radio personality, had been sponsored for a long period by Richfield Oil, and the client's name became thoroughly implanted in his mind. The station advised him that he had a new sponsor, Rich Maid Creamery. On the very first program, he told housewives, I'd be sure your refrigerator is stocked up with a couple of quarts of Richfield oil for your babies. Stay tuned to a sermon by Reverend Smith. Don't miss it if you can. Remember, every Friday night is Fright Night on NBC. On one of television's most popular audience participation programs on which occupations of contestants are guessed, a mystery guest was being quizzed by a blindfolded panelist who asked, Are you male or female? <laughs> I haven't looked lately. On Strike It Rich, popular television program, the master of ceremonies interviewed a five-year-old child whose father was in the U.S. Army serving in Korea. The child wanted to strike it rich for a new bed and a larger apartment. Let's listen in to the child's problem. My daddy is in the Army in Korea. When my Uncle Charlie comes over the weekends, he makes me sleep in the kitchen. But he's really not my Uncle Charlie. This conclude. This conclude. This this con. Uh, this conclude. That is all. <laughs>